Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Olivia Holas for Boca Magazine, and I am thrilled to introduce you to Dr. Jared Friedman of CoreSmart Pain Health Institute. Dr. Treat, uh, Dr. Friedman, excuse me, treats acute and chronic pain of the spine and peripheral joints, cancer-related pain, sports injuries, and other sprain conditions, including accident-related injuries and chronic post-operative pain. That's quite a mouthful, Dr. Freeman. Welcome. Thank you for joining yes. us today. Thank you very much, and thank you for the introduction. Yeah, it's, we treat the compendium. I'll, I'll just say, leave it simple. Well, your job is definitely not easy, and if anyone is experiencing any sort of pain, you are the person to see. So do tell us, what types of pain therapies do you prescribe? Well, you prescribe what's necessary for your patient. I think that's the unique factor of being a good, I shouldn't say good physician, but the way I was trained and, and when I taught at Johns Hopkins and I ran a department there, each patient's unique. And so each patient needs a specific modality or treatment. And if you're a well-rounded pain management physician and physiatrist, you can be conservative with traditional therapies like physical therapy, occupational therapy, laser therapies, acupuncture, herbal therapies, whatever they need. Or you can use intervention in a conservative fashion to do minimal injections to target the area or even diagnose. Or you can go all the way to the more aggressive and do surgical intervention or implants and other things. And, and so I'm able to do pretty much what the patient needs in my eyes, I feel for acute, you try to do the minimal and make it so people don't need injections and they can just get therapy on their own and do it at home or with a therapist. And nowadays with COVID, you wanna to try to give them exercises so they don't need to expose themselves to therapists and hospitals and, and other centers or give a medication to decrease inflammation or other options to be independent. And if they do need intervention, you wanna be able to do it in your office or you know minimally so it's protected and they're not exposed. And so I prescribe all those. And what is unique about your approach, Dr. Friedman? It's tailored. I treat people like family. I wouldn't do anything to a patient I wouldn't do to my wife, my kids, my mom, my sister. Um, I'm a fifth generation healthcare provider. So I, I've been trained since five was the first x-ray I ever saw. Um, it was cardiomegaly. My father was interpreting an x-ray for my grandfather. And my grandfather used to run the Board of Ethics for Maryland and be president of family practice for the U.S. And he always said, don't cause a problem in trying to treat it. And so doing minimal and really trying to treat your patient like family, to me, is what you should do. And if you wouldn't do it to a family member, then why would you do it to, to your patient? And so I take that to heart. And I think that's what's unique about my practice, plus 18 years of experience, 2.5 million needles placed. I mean, you know, in my career, I think I calculated one time. I mean, it, you know, you do it enough, it, it, you know, that's what's unique about you, I guess. Right, you're an expert. answer your question. <laughs> Absolutely, you're an expert um, and you care, which, you know, is so important and, and, and nice to know. What is the difference between the more traditional conservative therapies versus more advanced treatments? You know, could you elaborate on that? Well, I think conservative versus more advanced therapies depends on your training and depends on your perspective. You know, patients sometimes have the misconception that intervention means advanced therapy and medication is conservative. It depends on the dose and it depends on what you're prescribing. Um, I see some patients who've come in and they're on three different neuropathic medications, medication for nerve pain, and it's causing fluid retention or swelling or weight gain. And that weight gain then causes a more knee pain or more hip pain, or they've been on chronic steroids for seven years or 10 years. And all those have significant ramifications medically. And nobody ever told them, you could have done just a little injection and not been on steroids for 10 years. Or there is implanted devices, which some people would consider advanced. It's, advanced, it's a little more aggressive, but it's conservative compared to chronic steroids for 30 years. Or IV ketamine infusions for CRPS you know, people use, and I go, why would you expose yourself to that instead of just having a device on your skin or using a topical medication? And so I think depending on the patient and depending on the physician, physicians many times will present things as more conservative or more advanced instead of talking about what's appropriate for the disease and what's appropriate for that patient and taking their, the patient's specific perspective into play. Meaning some patients come to me and they say, I don't want pills, I just want an injection. And to them, injections are very conservative and very minimal 
compared to opioids or neuropathic meds or steroids. And you have other patients say, I won't have an injection. I don't want surgery. I don't want any, give me something to take away my pain. And you go, okay, this is your options. And so I think it's somewhat a loaded question because depending on your biasness as a physician, you could take that question one way or the other. Myself personally, uh, tailoring it to the patient, I would throw it back at the patient and go, okay, these are your options. What do you really want from me or what do you hope to gain in this you know, visit? I mean, what, what do you want? What approach are you looking for? And there are some patients who say, I don't know. And then I take over and I do my job and, and be the physician and, and I say, this is what I would do for a family member, but this is more conservative. Physical therapy, multimodal you know, approach is my normal because uh, pain to me, one approach won't treat it long-term. An injection might solve the pain for a few months, even six months. Surgery sometimes can solve pain for a year or two years, but there's large studies that show even if you have surgery, your pain is going to recur in five years. And unless you treat prevention and you educate on prevention and you educate on how to fix the problem, which is normally biomechanics and health and how you eat and how you walk and how you move, the patient's going to be back in your office in five years and need repeat surgery or need repeat intervention. And we see this, or I see this in patients who had six surgeries, seven surgeries, 10 surgeries. And they come to me after 10 surgeries, like a patient this morning had 15 surgeries. And he finally found his way to me. And I just said, well, have you thought of these three things? And he says, no, nobody ever brought it up to me. In 15 surgeries, nobody brought up basic conservative therapy. And that always makes me, it still surprises me even after 18 years I, that surgeons sometimes, and I don't mean to pick on them at all, but their training is just, this is surgery. And they never taught their patient prevention. They're, they didn't teach them well, how do you move without wearing down your spine or how you strengthen your core or are you flexible? Because if you're not flexible, you're going to strain your back, you're going to strain your neck, you're going to strain other muscles or adaptive equipment, you know, just saying, how about a secondary mirror on your car so you're not turning your head and you don't have neck pain when you drive? Right. Little things that are obvious. Um, anyway, sorry. It's, it's right. No, it, it's interesting. And it leads me to my next question. What is a common mistake that you see patients making prior to seeking your medical expert advice? Oh, <laughs> I, I think it depends on the patient. I, I would say the most common, uh, you know, one of the physicians that I know calls me the cleanup man. And so I would say that, you know, seeing multiple physicians and never getting a right answer, never understanding your problem is the biggest misconception. When I did a patient advocate lecture in Maryland, um, it, it was a community which was very deprived. And they had physicians in that community which didn't always serve their interests. And so I always would tell patients there and, and now, ask why. Why do I need this? Why do I have this? And why can't I get that? And, he, and if the physician isn't willing to answer those questions, like why this procedure is going to help me, why do I need it now, why don't I need something else, then I would leave. Because I think a physician who's not willing to talk or educate their patient, that's a concern for me as a physician, because you should always be able to answer the question why. And you should be able to justify why this therapy and not something else. And I think that's the biggest mistake patients make if I was gonna, if I was gonna put the onus on the patient, not the doc, I'm gonna put it on the doctor in a second, but um, I, I would say patients being their own advocate and, and really asking questions of why. I think, you know, from a physician's point of view, I think some physicians get complacent with their approach and they get biased because for whatever reason, you know, if you see enough of something, you just assume that's it. And if you don't always not question yourself, but make sure you've looked at every option and make sure you really have the right diagnosis and do the things you need to do, um, you can miss them. And, you know, I've seen that in my career where a patient came to me and she came for back pain. And I said, bring me your disc so I can see them. I wanted to see all her old images. And I threw a disc in and she goes, oh, that's my bladder ultrasound. You don't, you don't need to see that. I said, well, it's in, let me take a look because that's what I like to do. And it was red as normal and she had a four centimeter mass in her bladder. And that was actually the cause of her hip and the sacral pain issues. 
and we were, I immediately got her on the phone and got her over to a urologist and she had stage one cancer and hadn't broken through. And the urologist, why are you referring me an oncologic patient? I explained the whole issue. And, and her pain went away and everything else. And, and you see that. And I think if you don't always try to be as thorough as possible, you can miss that. I mean, the number of cancers I picked up in my career is scary. I mean, it, you, you don't want to have to make that diagnosis. And I don't want to make people afraid that every pain issue is a cancer. It's not. But just assuming that you look at an x-ray and you know that, that the, if there's a disc herniation or you look at a knee x-ray and you say, oh, you have a meniscal tear because you did a physical exam is not accurate on knowing what we know today. I did a review article in 2004, which there were multiple rheumatologic studies and orthopedic studies that showed physical exam is inaccurate 40 to 60% of the time. And people miss tears or they miss major pathologies underneath because they don't get MRIs or they don't do ultrasound. And they assume they know and they wait too long for the study. And patients will have 12 weeks of physical therapy that was wasted because they were treating a pain issue and not a diagnosis. And, and so you need to get to a diagnosis to treat a condition. And you know, if you don't, if you come to me and say, I have knee pain, or I have back pain, and I got this therapy, I, I get scared because I go, that's not a diagnosis, that's not a pathology. And, um, so it, you have to really get to the root of the problem and, and yes. it's not always easy, but you know, that's really the key. Thank you for bringing back around and concentrating my, my verbosity. <laughs> not at all. Well, listen, before we wrap things up, um, I've been admiring your artwork behind you. Can you share with our viewers uh, what we are looking at? Oh, yeah. I, I, you know, I've gotten so used. That's my son's artwork and my daughter's. And I, you know, I'm a family guy. And to me, family's everything. And that's why I treat patients like family. And so I color my, my office, my little cubby up uh, to remind me of what I'm working for, which is my kids and my family and my home. And, and those are the people that matter the most to me in my life. And, um, and I know every one of my patients is somebody's mom or somebody's father or somebody's daughter or son. And so I, it reminds me of who I am. That's really great. It, it's, uh, it's really nice to see. And you're right, family's everything. Thank you so much, Dr. Friedman, for chatting with us. We really appreciate you taking the time out of your very busy schedule. It was an honor. Thank you. Thank, thank you. And thank you to our viewers for tuning in. We'll Thanks see you everybody. next time soon. Bye. <laughs>